What's up guys, Sila here and I am back with another video and this time we're going to be running through the Glory of the Legion Hero Achievement Series and when you complete all of the achievements you'll be awarded with the Reigns of the Leaf Feather Hippogriff which is this quite cool looking purple hippogriff mount. Now this will be aimed at 120 characters looking to do this solo but the information here should be useful if you're doing this in a group as well. And there are two achievements that cannot be done solo, so I'll talk about those at the end of the video. But outside of that, we'll run through all of the achievements that are soloable. In the description down below, you will find timestamps for the various dungeons and the individual achievements as well, if there's only some particular ones that you need help with. The first dungeon up is going to be Eye of Ajara, and that's going to give us three achievements. All of these need to be done on Mythic difficulty, so do make sure you are on Mythic. And the first one up is, but you say he's just a friend, which will come from the first boss. And that is to defeat Warlord Pajish without allowing any hate coil shell breakers to die. Very straightforward achievement at 120. You can basically just burst down the boss as quickly as possible and you'll get the achievement. If the adds do spawn, just completely ignore them. Make sure you don't do any cleave or anything like that and just tunnel vision the boss and get it killed. The next achievement up is Stay Salty and that is to defeat Lady Hate Coil after destroying 11 or more sea salt globules with a single Curse of the Witch. This one's a little bit tricky at 120 because the sea salt globules come from a spell cast which can actually miss you at 120 so you can be waiting quite a while to get the 11 you need but you just need to wait it out until you do have 11 or more. The other main thing to note as well is Curse of the Witch is cast on you. It's a debuff and after it expires you'll do a frontal cone in front of you killing any globules up at the time. So when that's happening when you don't have 11 what you'll want to do is face your character away from them aim the cone away from the globules and then you'll be fine. So just make sure you don't accidentally kill them until you have 11. The final thing to note as well is static novo causes the, the ground to become electrocuted. What you want to do is stand on one of the little sand piles to not get stunned because if you're stunned it can line up with Curse of the Witch at the same time meaning you can't control the direction of the frontal cone and you'll kill the adds by accident. But just get 11, kill them with the Curse of the Sea Witch and then kill the boss, as simple as that. The final achievement up in this dungeon is going to be ready for raiding 5, which is to defeat Rafa Vajara without being struck by magic or frost resonance. So what you'll want to do is go into melee range, regardless of if you're ranged or melee, and you want to slowly rotate around the boss, doing as much damage as you can while dodging the swirlies on the ground and the tidal waves and the other various kind of effect mechanics on the ground. The stuff that the boss directly does at you, you can't avoid and that doesn't affect the achievement. It's just the things that you can avoid that you need to avoid. If you do get hit by something, just reset the fight and give it another go and keep doing that until the boss is dead without you being hit by any of the dodgeable mechanics. The next dungeon up is going to be Vault of the Wardens, which is in Azuna also, and it will give three achievements. All of these achievements need to be done on Mythic Difficulty. The first one up is going to come from the third or fourth boss, depending on which way round you do it. And that is going to be Ash Golem. It doesn't really matter which way round you do it. So just head over to Ash Golem and you'll get the achievement I Ain't Even Cold, which is to defeat Ash Golem while all party members are fired up. Fired up is a debuff that comes from getting five stacks of the lava debuff. And the lava debuff is applied from the kind of lava pools on the ground. So the way you want to approach this is to allow a bunch of lava pools to spawn, don't run through them, try and avoid them as long as you can. Kill off all of the little fire elementals because they will absorb the lava pools as well. And then once you have a bunch you want to run through them, get your 5 stacks of lava, and then once you have 5 stacks of lava that will turn into a new debuff called Fired Up, and then you'll be able to kill the boss. If you're on your own, only you need to get the debuff. If you have four people with you, then all four of you need to get the debuff. So do keep that in mind. It's better to take it in turns, get one person the debuff, wait it out, get another person the debuff. Rinse and repeat like that until everyone's got it. And then you can kill the boss. The next achievement up is Who's Afraid of the Dark, which is to defeat Cordana after successfully navigating Creeping Doom while without holding a loon's light. So Cordana is the last boss, so you'll want to make your way to the last boss in the dungeon. And then once there, you want to pick up a loon's light, DPS down the boss, the boss will transition and add will spawn. You want to kill the add, and then you want to pick up the light again. And what I did at this point was kind of threw the light at Cordana to reveal her to transition her again. Some people have said that has caused them to fail though. And what they've done instead is they simply wait. And after about a minute or a minute and a half, she'll become attackable again. But for me, throwing the light at her worked as long as you don't pick up the light again after revealing her. Then you want to DPS her down again and push her into the next transition. 
and this is the phase where you cannot touch the light. It'll be the creeping doom phase and what will happen is these kind of walls will spawn on one of the sides of the room. There'll be a gap in the wall and you need to position your character in a way where you'll go through the gap and you won't hit the, the wall, the kind of night elf ghost wall. If you do hit the wall itself, you'll take damage and fail the achievement. So what you'll want to do is position yourself in a way where you'll go through the gaps and you want to be consistently looking around the room for the next wall. Sometimes the walls do overlap in an awkward way, so you will need to position yourself so that you'll go through all of the gaps or sometimes you might need to run through the gap and then position yourself for the next gap. So it can be kind of tricky, but you just need to think ahead a little bit. Once that is done, Cordana will come back down and you can DPS her down and kill her. You're free to use the light in this phase. Some people have said once again it has caused it to bug for them. But you can use the light and that shouldn't be a problem. Kill the boss and you'll get the achievement. The final achievement up in this dungeon is a Spectre Illuminated. And once you've killed Cordana, you want to head back towards the elevator that brought us down to this section. Before you get on the elevator, you want to pick up a Loon's Light and take that with you. So once you have a Loon's Light on your head, you'll head back up the stairs and you want to head towards Ash Golem's room. Before you get inside Ash Golem's room though, you want to take a right and you'll end up in this kind of little small room. Once in there, you basically want to wait and eventually you'll find a like Wandering Spirit. Once the Wandering Spirit's there, it will allow you to find um, one of two mobs. That will be the Cordana mob or the um, Tirathon mob. And that'll spawn, you'll kill it. And then you want to go turn around, run all the way through the corridor to the opposite side and you'll find another one of these little rooms. You'll wait there again and the other mob that you haven't killed yet will spawn, so Cordana or Tirathon. Once both of those are dead, you'll go to the connecting corridor that you ran through to get here and you'll kind of wait there and after a little bit the Inquisitor mob will spawn and then you'll kill that and then you've done the achievement. It can be a little bit finicky but just kind of look out for the Wandering Ghost Follow that a little bit and that will take you to kind of the next ghost and you'll you'll kill the spirit. The next dungeon up is Black Rook Hold and we're going to get three achievements from this dungeon. One is doable on normal difficulty and I would definitely recommend doing it on normal. Otherwise, it's not really going to be doable. So the first achievement that you can do on normal is the you used to scroll me in your fell tome. And that is to collect six, six different pages throughout the dungeon. But the issue is only one page spawns per run. So you're going to have to run through the dungeon, see which page is up, collect it, get out the dungeon, reset it and go again. That's why you want to do it on normal difficulty because you can keep resetting normal over and over again until you have all of the pages. Now it is RNG, you could get the same page six times in a row if you're on Looker, but that's how it goes. So the first one up is the torn page and that is found in the library desk just after the first boss. The second one is the worn edged page and that is the uh, just in the bookcase in the grand hall. Then you have the dog-eared page, which is in the, the right of the Grand Hall after you finish that section. There'll be a little desk. Then they'll have the singed page, which is the worm tongue hallway. And then you'll have the ink splattered page, which is in the, the pedestal after killing the third boss. You have this little area. And then the final page is the hastily scrawled page, which is just before you reach the final boss, the kind of last room before you get to the final boss room. Keep running through until you get all six pages and you're done with that achievement. This is much better to do on a druid or monk or a death knight because you can use your teleport spells to get in and out of the dungeon a little bit quicker. The next two achievements up do require you to be on mythic difficulty. So once you've finished the previous achievement, do make sure you are on mythic and head back inside. The first one up is going to be Black Rook Moan, which requires you to kill the Amalgam of Souls after killing a Frustrated Soul. A frustrated soul is a restless soul that you've not allowed to reach the boss for a prolonged period of time. And to do that, you will need to be a specific class. You'll need to be a druid or a monk or a death knight. I've heard of hunters doing it, but there are certain classes that just can't do it. You need to be able to have like a root or a death grip or something like that, basically to stop the mob from reaching the boss. Things like repentance don't work, so do keep that in mind too. So what you'll do is DPS down the boss to about 50-ish percent. The boss will transition, restless souls will spawn, you'll pick one restless soul, you'll keep slowing it or rooting it or whatever you need to do, keep it away from the boss and after a prolonged period of time it will turn into a frustrated soul, you can kill it and then you can kill the boss. The final achievement up in this dungeon is going to be adds more like bads which is to defeat Ilisana Ravencrest without killing any of her allies in Black Rook Hold. You can basically just burst down the boss and you'll get the achievement, but if your DPS is a little bit slower and adds do spawn, just make sure you don't use any cleave or AoE spells. 
kill the boss and you'll get the achievement. The next dungeon up is going to be Dark Heart Thicket and this dungeon has two achievements inside it. The first one comes from the third boss and it must be done on Mythic Difficulty and that is excellent. And that is to defeat Drasaron after slaying the Hatespawn Abomination. The Hatespawn Abomination comes from a large purple egg found behind the boss. So you'll pull the boss, it doesn't matter if you don't yet. But you'll run over to that egg, you'll aggro the egg and Ad will come out of the egg. And then you need to basically make sure the boss is pulled. You'll kill the Hatespawn and then you'll kill the boss, a quite straightforward achievement. The final achievement in this dungeon is burning down the house and that's going to come from Shade of Xavius. And that's to defeat him while he has 10 stacks of Apocalyptic Empowerment. Now Apocalyptic Empowerment is a, a mechanic that starts happening at the end of the fight. So you want to DPS him down to about 10 to 15% HP. And then make sure you don't have any pets going, any dots rolling, any trinkets or Azerite pieces that might do damage by accident. So just be careful there that you don't kill the box, uh, boss by accident. And there'll, there'll be these swirlies on the ground that you'll want to kite the boss into. Once it gets 10 stacks from the swirly, so 10 stacks of apocalyptic, apocalyptic empowerment, then you can kill the boss. Do make sure you kill it while it still does have the, the 10 stacks active, as if they fall off, you'll fail. The next dungeon up is going to be Neltharian's Lair, and this dungeon is going to have two achievements from it. The first one up is Got to Catch Em All, which is to imprint seven snails onto the Catchem tablet. Now this could be done on normal, heroic or mythic, but I would recommend doing it on mythic because then you can do the other achievement which will be mythic only while you're in the dungeon too. So to start this achievement off, you're going to head inside the dungeon, you're going to go down the waterfall and you're immediately going to start kind of hugging the right path once you get out the water and that will take you down kind of a hidden track and reach you to the mushroom merchant. The mushroom merchant will allow you to buy the Ketchum tablet and once you have that, head back onto the normal track and then start clearing up to and the first boss. Once the first boss is dead, you need to be ready to jump in the barrel and you'll have an extra action button which will allow you to throw a fish. During your kind of trail down the, the barrel, um, there's going to be a little snail on the left hand side called Scaler. So you'll want to throw a fish at the snail which will knock it off and send it into the water. So do make sure you're ready to throw the fish at it. And then once you get down the kind of water ride on the barrel, you want to look for Scaly who should be coming down the waterfall too. Find it, hit it with the tablet and that is the first snail out of the way. Next up, right where we are right now, you'll head down and this will be kind of like a secret cave. So you want to keep trying to swim down and eventually it will lead you into a little cave area. And there you'll find Sparky. Sparky will be on the left hand side. Just slowly walk up to Sparky, don't get inside the electric pool but right on the edge of it. And then use the tablet and squash Sparky. Once we're done with that, we'll head out and back up into the main section of the dungeon. And then you're going to take the left path and keep running down there. And then you should find kind of a left trail that will take you to the next hidden cave. So follow that all the way down. And then once we're there, you'll find a cave and there'll be Slinky hid in the cave. It'll be stealthed. So just keep walking around. You'll find it in the corner and squash that with the tablet too. Once we're done with that, we can head back and continue clearing through the dungeon and you want to kill the second boss, Ulrog. And once that boss is dead, you'll head a little bit past it and you'll find this kind of little racetrack with three snails going around the racetrack. That'll be a uh, whip snap, turbax and blaze. So you just want to kind of stand there and keep using your tablet until you get them all. It can be a little bit finicky at times trying to get them because they are quite speedy, but eventually you'll get all three and you can move on. Once we're done with that one, you'll head straight forward into the water area and you'll keep running through, running through, and eventually you'll get to a cave at the very end. Stick uh, Sticky will be on the ceiling of this cave and you'll need to use a spell like Torn or some kind of non-damaging spell that can kind of pull threat onto the mob to knock it off the, the wall. Now, if you don't have any of those kind of options, you'll need to get creative by taking gear off and, you know, doing something along those lines to try and pull it down. Because basically you need to pull it off the ceiling without killing it. So, you know, you need to use some kind of spell there. Um, CC spells work fine on it as long as you don't do damage. So do keep that in mind. Once it's knocked off the ceiling, you'll hit it with the tablet and you have all the snails you need. The final achievement in this dungeon will be Can Eat Just One, which is to defeat Naraxxus after she gains six stacks of Ravenous. So to do this fight, you'll pull the boss and basically not do a whole lot. You can DPS her down a little bit if you want to, but just make sure you don't kill her. And basically just hang out until the adds spawn. They spawn in sets of two. They'll run over to the boss. Don't do any damage to them at all. 
and eventually they'll reach the boss and she'll eat them one at a time and she'll gain one stack per ad she eats. So you have to wait for three waves of the ads, she'll eat all six and then you'll be able to kill her. Now she will do the pull thing every once in a while, so it's better to kind of stay a bit away from the boss just so you don't get instantly eaten. And when she does start doing the pull, just run away, use mobility, whatever you need to do, just to avoid being eaten because it could kill you. And then once she has six stacks, kill the boss and you've got your achievement. The next dungeon up is going to be the Arcway and there's three achievements from here that need to be done on Mythic. Some people have said they've gotten a couple of them on Heroic, but it does state they need to be done on Mythic, so we are going to do it as if that's the case. The first one up is going to be Clean House, which is def to defeat Crustilax without any pools of Nightwell energy expiring. This one's pretty straightforward, you literally just nuke the boss as hard and fast as you can, so take talents that are going to maximise your burst damage, kill the boss as quickly as possible and you will get the achievement. The next achievement up is Arcanic Kling, which is to defeat Avanir without taking any damage from Charge Ball in Arcway. And this one's fairly straightforward, at a point in the fight he'll run over to the crystal, a bunch of balls will start coming out of the crystal, and you basically just sidestep them and make sure you don't get hit by any. Most people will have enough DPS to DPS him down before he even does this, but if you do make it to that phase then literally just dodge them until it ends, and then kill the boss. The final achievement up in this dungeon is No Time to Waste, and that is to defeat Advisor Vandross without killing any Timeless Wraiths in Arcway. So basically you just aggro the boss, you'll DPS him down, and eventually he'll teleport you to a specific part of the dungeon. You'll have to make your way back, some areas will be locked, so you'll have to kind of follow a specific route. But make, make your way back to the, the main room where you were fighting the boss originally. And as you're going along, just literally avoid the Timeless Wraiths, don't walk through them, don't aggro them, don't DPS them, just make your way to the boss, kill the boss, and you've got the achievement. The next dungeon up is Court of Stars, and from this dungeon we will get two achievements. The first one up is Waiting for Girdor, which does state it needs to be done on Mythic difficulty, but currently it does work on Heroic too, and I would recommend doing it on Heroic, because it will allow us to get the other achievement we need from this dungeon as well on Mythic difficulty. So to get this achievement done, you want to head inside the dungeon. You want to clear out all of the trash, especially the sentries. They should be your main focus. Make sure you clear, kill off all the sentries and kill them as quickly as possible. Don't let them reach the beacons at all. And don't click the beacons yet either. So clear out all the trash, make your way to the first boss. Clear out all the trash around the first boss too without aggroing the boss. And then once that is done, you're ready to aggro the boss. So you're going to aggro the boss. You're going to pull him to about 70-60%. And once that happens, a bunch of ads will spawn. I killed off the ads first before I started moving him anywhere, but don't, don't do any more DPS to the boss just yet. And with him at about 60% and all the ads dead, I then moved him towards the very first beacon at the start of the dungeon. I click the beacon, I deactivate it. Then I move him to the second beacon, I click it, I deactivate it. And then I take him back to his original room and I'll do the three beacons there. And then before you start DPSing down the boss, just kind of get him back to the center of the room. Because what will happen is when you get him low, he'll run towards his potion and drink that. And if he's not in a good spot, his pathing will break and he'll begin evading, which will cause you, need, uh, you to need to reset. But the beacons will already be disabled, causing you to not be able to do it anymore. So do keep that in mind and do make sure you are killing the beacons in a good order. Otherwise, you can mess this up. But get that done and you'll get the achievement. The final achievement from this dungeon is dropping some eaves. And this does have quite a lot of requirements behind it. Which is why I recommended doing the last one on Heroic. Meaning you can come out and have this on Mythic. So you've got the full reset and you can do everything properly. So this is to witness the conversation between Advisor, Melandrus and also the Elisand. And to do that we have a few things that you'll need to do. The first one is don't let any sentry cast a sound alarm. So you'll need to make sure all the sentries die before they can reach the sound alarm. You'll want to also deactivate all five beacons before you pull the first boss, which is why you needed to have done both of them on separate lockouts. So make sure you de deactivate all five beacons, make sure all sentries are dead and they didn't reach any of the beacons. And then once you have all five beacons dead, you can then pull and kill the boss. Once the boss is dead, you'll make it to the next section of the dungeon where the next boss is. And this one's not confirmed, but people are saying they do kill all of the three demons separately before they pull the boss. To make that happen, you'll basically just go around and kill the Fell Enforcer, I think they're called. And the Fell Enforcer will summon one of the bosses out. You'll kill the mini boss, and you'll do that three times, and then the main boss will have no guardians left. Go over, kill that boss, and then you're into the final section of the dungeon, where you're going to get your disguise. 
you're going you're gonna to get all five clues, and then you're going to be very, very careful with making sure you have the right person before you speak to them. Because if you don't pick the right person on the first attempt, you fail. So make sure you get all your five clues. Make sure you're 100% positive that the one you're going to accuse of being a demon is actually a demon. And then if you get it right, the demon will walk up the stairs. You kill the demon. You collect the keys. You open the door. And this time around, they won't know you're there. They'll continue talking. And then they'll be like, wait a minute. That guy is there. And you'll be spotted and you'll get the achievement. Then you can kill the last boss if you want to. It doesn't matter. The next dungeon up is the Violet Hold. And this one's fairly straightforward. It's going to give two achievements. But the problem is the Violet Hold has random bosses that can spawn each week. You'll get two specific bosses each week. And it's completely random which ones you'll get. So you'll have to keep doing Violet Hold each week on Mythic Difficulty. Until you get one of the two bosses that will give you an achievement. So the first achievement up is going to be from Festa Face. If you're lucky enough to get Festa Face in that week rotation, you'll need the achievement I made a food. And it's pretty straightforward. You'll basically just begin the fight. You'll just AFK and eventually the boss's bar will tick up and tick up and tick up and a black um, bile will spawn. And once that spawns, you'll kill it and make sure you don't accidentally kill the boss. And then once the black bile is dead, you can kill the boss, and that is that achievement out the way nice and easy. The next random boss we'll need is Maleficent, and this one's quite straightforward. It's called You're Just Making It Worse, and what'll happen is you'll aggro the boss. You'll do very little DPS. You don't need to kill her straight away, or you don't want to kill her straight away. Uh, just do little or no DPS, and eventually she'll throw bombs, and Millhouse will say, quick, disarm the squirrel bombs. Run over to them and click them. That'll disarm the bomb. And then after a period of time, he'll say again, now make fun of her hair. It won't help, but it'll make her really mad. And then she'll get mad. And you'll see she'll have a debuff or a buff saying she's really angry now. And once that happens, you can kill her and achievement done. It was believed that you did need the Millhouse toy for this achievement, but that doesn't seem to be the case as you can get it without it. The next dungeon up is more of souls. And this dungeon can give three achievements, but one of them will require a five man group. So I'll talk about that towards the end of the video. But do keep in mind, if you want to get all three from this dungeon, you will need a five man group. So the first achievement up that is soloable is instant karma. And that is to defeat Yumeron after defiantly striking down six risen warriors. So what you'll want to do is begin the dungeon and start clearing trash, but you'll want to keep a Seeker Soul Keeper alive. Either don't aggro it yet or don't kill it. It's, it's up to you how you go about it, but do make sure you do have one alive. Once you reach the boss, just aggro the boss and kill, you can start DPSing him, but don't kill him. Just leave him alive and eventually he'll do a mechanic where he'll summon the Risen Warriors. And then what you'll want to do is have your Seeker Soul Keeper in a position where it's going to do its frontal cleave onto the Risen Warriors. So kind of have the, the Soul Keeper on one side and the Risen Warriors on the other. And the mob will do its cleave and it'll kill the Risen Warriors. And then once you've killed six of them, it does spawn six at a time, then you can kill the boss. But I waited for another wave just in case, but it's up to you. You know, he, he does summon six at a time, so one wave is enough. Once you're done with that, you have the achievement. The next achievement up that is soloable will require mythic difficulty as well, and that is Helheim Hafno Fura, and that is to rescue the captured Valkyr in More of Souls. So once you kill the first boss, you click on the horn and you end up on the Naglfar, an invisible timer will start ticking down, and from there you have just over three minutes to make it to the second boss and kill the second boss in that window. If you don't, then the Valkyr will die and you'll fail the achievement. So rush your way to the second boss as quickly as possible. Use all your cooldowns and just kill the boss as quick as you can. And then once the boss is dead, you'll kind of see this Valkyr to the right hand side, slowly losing its health. And as long as you kill the boss before it's fully drained of health, you'll get the achievement. The final dungeon up is going to be Halls of Valor. And this dungeon has three achievements, but one of them will require a four man group at least. So if you do want to get all of the achievements from this place, do keep in mind you will need a four man group uh, to get them all. But the other two are completely soloable. So the first soloable one up is going to be Stag Parter, And that is to defeat a Storm Drake after allowing it to gain 10 stacks of killing blow in Halls of Valor. So you'll head over to the section with Fenrir in and you'll find these stags kind of scattered around the room. It's up to you if you want to fully clear everything else or not. I didn't really bother, but you want to aggro the Storm Drake. Don't do any damage to it. And you want to pull it around the room to all the various stags. There's some right where you entered. There's some over near the, the kind of Fenrir's cave. So you want to be just slowly pulling it around the room and getting it to eat the dragon or eat the stags, I should say. 
Every time it eats one, it'll gain a buff for a minute. And you want to get it to get 10 stacks of the buff by getting it to kill 10 separate stacks. Once it has all 10 stacks, you'll just need to kill the Storm Drake within that one minute, which should be very easy, uh, easily doable for a 120 character. And as long as it has 10 stacks when it dies, you'll get the achievement. The final achievement up in this dungeon that is soloable is Surge Protector, and that is to defeat Odin, which is the last boss, without any Stormforged obliterators successfully casting Surge in Halls of Valor. So periodically throughout the fight, he'll summon an add, and the add the second it spawns will begin casting Surge. You can use CC on it, you can use interrupts, or you can kill it, it has very low HP. It's up to you how you want to go about it, just make sure it doesn't cast Surge, and then kill the boss. With 120 DPS, it should maybe get one add out or two at worst, but realistically one to zero if you have enough DPS and you've got yourself the achievement. So right now you'll have two achievements missing and both of these achievements cannot be done solo currently. The first one up is Poor Unfortunate Souls, which requires everyone in the group to have the Poor Unfortunate Soul buff and then kill Helia in More of Souls. So to get this started, you will need five people and then you'll head over to Black Rook Hold and you'll do this on Heroic or Mythic. It doesn't matter which one you do Black Rook Hold on. You'll go inside Black Rook Hold with all five party members and you'll find a blue fire pit. You'll click on the fire pit. Only one person has to click it and all five pa party members will get the Wandering Soul buff. Now from here on out, nobody can die. If anyone dies to whatever cause, fall damage, whatever, you'll have to start again. So do keep that in mind. So once you all have your, your buffs, you'll go to the last boss of Black Rook. You'll kill the last boss. We waited for the RP to go through where you get the damage reduction first. Don't know if that's required, but it's worth waiting just in case. And once you kill the boss, the buff will turn from Wandering Soul into Lost Soul. From there, it'll last for 10 minutes. You need to be very quick here. And you need to make your way to more of Souls. Now more of Souls needs to be done on Mythic. It cannot be done on Heroic. So you'll get all of your five, uh, five party members inside on Mythic. They'll all have the Lost Soul debuff and you'll make your way to the first boss. You'll kill the first boss with all five party members and the buff will turn into Damned Soul. Once you have Damned Soul, you'll make your way to the second boss in More of Souls who's Harboron. You'll kill that boss and the buff will turn from Damned Soul into a Poor Unfortunate Soul. Making sure all five party members still have Poor Unfortunate Soul at this point You'll make your way to Helia, you'll kill Helia, and you should get the achievement. The last achievement up that can't be soloed, and the last achievement you'll need for this meta is I Got What You Mead, which is to splash all four Vical Kings with a mug of mead. So you'll need at least four people for this one. Five is fine as well, but you'll need at least four. And what you'll want to do is clear out the first three bosses, and the, the Vical Kings that we need are just after the third boss. So clear out the first three bosses, clear out the Grand Hall area, making sure nobody's clicked on any of the mugs by accident. Once you're there, you'll clear out all the trash if you need to. And what we did was assigned everyone a, a mug. Everyone went over and stood near a mug. And then we assigned each person a king they would splash. So we just said, you number one, you number two, you number three. And then we did a countdown, five, four, three, two, one. We all picked up the mug and we ran as fast as we could to the Vical Kings. Because once you pick up the mug, you only have a minute before the debuff will, or the buff will expire and you lose the mug. So just do a countdown just to make sure everyone is ready and they have the mug. Then you'll run to the Vical Kings. We did another countdown and then we all threw the mug at the same time and we got ourselves the achievement. So with that final achievement down, you've done everything you need to do to get yourself the Hippogriff. Once you've finished with your final achievement, the mount will go in your mount collection automatically. And I want to say thank you to Sleepy and also Stone Saber for helping with the group achievements I needed to do, members of the Discord server. And if you want to join the Discord server, there'll be a link in the description down below. But hopefully this video was helpful to you. Hopefully you got most of these achievements done with no problem whatsoever. And yeah, look out for more videos coming soon. Thanks for watching, guys. See ya.